I would think by now we would have gotten a little bit sick of that music. Because it turns out I just get, I just like it more and more every time. Thanks, Jeff. It just keeps getting better. It, does. it keeps getting better. Hey guys, welcome back to Testing Normal. This is Curtis. And this is Jordan. And this is episode 112 strong, right? 112 strong? 112 strong, yeah, sure. What does that mean? That's right. Like <laughs> Um, it just means we're we're coming in hot. Coming in hot with a new mic, right? Yeah, new mic that almost didn't new work. New mic on Curtis's side, which almost didn't work. But we, I had to tweak the Weenel sprockets. Yeah. And um, as soon as I got the Weenus and the Weenel sprockets aligned, everything matched up perfectly. Yeah. Matched it was the perfectly. pins and the lug situation. And then we got it. It, was, <laughs> we, it, it worked out. So, yeah. Josh Crane says so, the mic sounds great and the music is good. Oh, thanks, Josh. So. Thanks, buddy. Um, also, Gary, always a pleasure to have you here, sir. Always a pleasure to have Gary Bear. Yeah, he was at my us. house this morning, and I believe now he's not. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> um, yes, we did adjust the, the, the plumbus. plumbus. No, it's uh, the plumbus, remember? The plumbus. Rick and Morty. Or do you call plumbus? Yeah. Yeah. I always called it plumbus. I don't know why. No, it's plumbus. Definitely on the commercial, plumbus. it's plumbus. That's actually how I got Josh Crane to watch Rick and Morty, um, which we need to watch maybe after this. Yes. Um Anyway, yes. the plumbus got adjusted, and now it works. The plumbus got adjusted. That's that's a classic episode. I don't remember which season. Maybe season two, a, I believe. It's Interdimensional Cable, I believe, one. And I think it was season one or two. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, hello, Lois Lobley Gill. Welcome, welcome to joining our show tonight. Pleasure to have you here as well. Um, well, guys, it's been a... Uh, <laughs> Gary loves Gare Bear. Perfect. <laughs> you got it. That's all you, Gary. That's all you. Um, well, guys, it's been a a relentless year of events yes. and topics that that lead most people to question where they stand in life and their own opinions. Insanity. Um, insanity. Uh, but I want to first off acknowledge that not everybody. You don't have to have an opinion about everything. Oftentimes. Most people do have an opinion about some, some to some degree a subject, but it's also, it's okay to say I don't know, I'm not sure how I feel about that, and then you know meditate on I it, would, do on I it. I would say to that, like just to add my two cents, I think there are a lot of things where you don't need to have an opinion. There are some things where having no opinion is an opinion. It just it leads you to inaction. Um, so that's just I'm not I don't have any specific yeah. ideas. I just sometimes that's where people are. It's because they're, it's a it's a fear of confrontation. They're like, well, if I say this, then I'll hurt someone's mm, feelings or mm-hmm. whatever. That is just, it's just another form of pride, and we need to get over that. And yeah, if you're if you're to a point where you decide you have an opinion, but you're afraid to act on it because of the consequences, and or you yourself aren't comfortable with that opinion, um, that's different. But if you literally are in a situation where you're like, man, I don't know, I don't yeah. know if. If that's okay, that's okay to, to yeah. tell people honestly. And it's, and it's I think healthy not to go and talk about it. Say, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Help me understand how you feel about it. Yes. And that is a great way of starting a dialogue. Even if you feel like you may have an opinion, it's great to say, please explain to me how you feel about it. The other um, the other side of things is it's it's okay if somebody else doesn't have an opinion on something you think is really really important. I've seen, I've seen this last year of all things like families ripped apart by that where. Someone had uh, an opinion about, say, like, for example, Black Lives Matters or whatever. And they're like, hey, if you're not speaking out about this, then you're racist. And like, no, it's just that's not my that, I don't have time for that right now. Like, I'm, I'm doing all these other things. And it, that might sound bad. Like, well, but it's, it's racial inequality. Everyone should have time for that. Like, well, they don't because everyone doesn't have time for well, all the things that yeah. you find important. Same thing. Yep. If you feel like you're feel convictions and you feel like you have hesitation with the vaccine and you don't feel like it's your role to speak out against it, you don't have to. That's okay. Um, But I think one of the most important topics of this week that everybody needs to kind of, I don't know, if you're not sitting down, you might want to sit down, um, but it's a pressing issue that has been plaguing our nation and unfortunately the world as well, is there's a common thread of McDonald's telling individuals that their McFlurry machines are not currently functioning. And this is an atrocity. The, like, 
you can you can it's s- a- stretch far and wide and see say what about this war what about this famine <laughs> what about this <laughs> what slavery about this what about these people selling organs um <laughs> that does not matter as much as the mcflurry and so I'm getting one right let's now. talk about this our uh, our current situation is if you go to McDonald's, it seems like I don't not many people maybe uh, go to McDonald's on the daily, but most people will at least have visited McDonald's in the past year potentially. And if you ask for a McFlurry, oftentimes, probably eighty percent of the time, somebody from McDonald's will say, "Sorry, a machine's broken." So, That's true. what's what's happened is this past month. Um, President Biden ordered the FTC to actually investigate what's taking place with the McFlurry machines at McDonald's. Because if you guys remember a couple months ago or a couple weeks ago, Jordan and I had talked about um, the unfair uh, repair acts and or the unfair the right to repair. Um, the right to repair. Exactly. Right. Thank you. Um, and there was a lot of controversy because these businesses were saying, Hey, if you lease or if you use our machines or if if you buy our machines, you're not allowed to work on them and we won't give you the software to diagnose them. We won't give you the tools to appropriately fix them. And apparently that's, what's been happening. That's why the McFlurries have been MIA for years and years now, because the company called Taylor is the one that actually owns them. And they're the only ones that are allowed their technicians to work on them. You know what um, bothers me about the McFlurry machine? It just seems kind of gross to me. I don't, and maybe I understand like that's a cleanliest thing or whatever. I don't like the spoon. Like I think it's, it's, oh, okay. it's horribly, it's too big, it's horribly uncomfortable. And I don't like that it was attached to the machine and that it's strong enough that it's like flurried everything. Like I think, I feel like, <laughs> I just feel like that's. You want a gentle. You want a gentle yeah, McFlurry. I do. I don't, I don't like it. It's a spoon McFlurry. attached to a plastic beam is what it is. Like, I have a problem with that. And this is coming it's from someone who of, doesn't really eat, hasn't eaten McFlurries in years and years and years and years. It still bothers me to this industrial. day. As soon as I saw it, I was like, I hate those damn spoons. That's what I hate. I keeps do you not up, like them. It keeps you up at night. Yep. I don't like it. keeps it. you up at night. Yep. I don't know. I think there's something nice about having a sturdy, strong mach- like spoon that you know if you put it into the ice cream, but it's, it's not going to bend. It's like going to Wendy's. It's not going like to Beef shouldn't be square, and neither should spoon handles. Like I I, know, these are the a sturdy. These are the important sturdy, things in life. <laughs> a sturdy spoon handle makes me feel like I have a warm blanket wrapped around me, and I'm laying next to a fire crackling in the middle of December on the Christmas Eve, and I have a hot cocoa <laughs> with a nice, nice stogie next to me, and my warm, nice pet dog that I'm smoking groomed. jacket. <laughs> that I'm You're sitting on a bearskin rug, many leather bound books surrounding yeah. me. That's what the McFlurry spoon means to me. But the, oh, no, you, no, not, not the everybody. McFlurry spoon. You said a, a sturdy spoon, which I can agree with because mm-hmm. I hate. Yeah, a sturdy I spoon. I absolutely hate plastic cutlery. Like, my wife loves it because it makes the clanking sound on teeth, and she hates that. And so it's like we have, we like dishwash, re, like non-reusable plastic forks and spoons, and I, it <laughs> absolutely, like, disgusts me. <laughs> Because those are porous. There's no way that there isn't right. like germs and gross things in there. And they're not meant to go through that kind of heat. And there's BPAs and stuff. And I've heard those are bad. And they should be nons. And like not get in you. And and I don't know how many times she's like, I, I, I will be nice. And I will get her like a plastic utensil or whatever. And she'll eat. And she's like, I look up and there's like fork pieces missing from the fork. And oh, they're gosh. like sticking out of her mouth like, like well that's the other that's thing like you, you don't know how much plastic equipment. you're eating yeah like right like if you reuse that plastic you're like no, am i eating plastic down. right now yes no it's like when you look down and you you get a coffee from a place that's like supposedly like healthy and for the environment and it says the lid says biodegradable it's like i know in my limited scientific experience that biodegradable typically means there needs to be heat and moisture present to begin to break something down right and i'm holding that like it's heat and moisture next to the thing that says biodegradable there's no way that lid is not now seeping into me like what was the uh there was an episode of 
the Veep. I don't know if anybody out there has watched the TV show Veep. It's a really funny show. If you haven't, you should watch it. But there was an episode where she sponsors people are, um, okay. some type of. Oh, <laughs> are they going this, off? This, this, okay. Sorry. I'll let you just finish your story. Hold it in your brain for okay. just a second. Because Crane okay. says, I use plastic cutlery when eating ice cream. That way I don't get the cold spoons and ruin the flavor. I disagree wholeheartedly. Metal spoons, best way to feel the flavor and taste it. Um, I'm just gonna like judge everyone's comments about these things. Uh, they're not shaped the right for your right for your mouth. Yes, exactly. The the McFlurry spoons, not just the handles. Same with the plastic, mm. um, uh, the, with Ivers plastic chowder spoons. Yes, those are an issue too. I've I've never seen very those. much experienced that those. as well. Um, mm. he's <laughs> Josh Great says I use my three year old's EPA free spoon, little spoon, and it's amazing. I am a children's huge cutlery fan of our children's cutlery are really actually. weird. We use it all the They're time. They're not the same we have angle. Tons of it. Have you noticed that? Like forks just are oh, it's straight. Very flat. There's no very curve. Flat. It's just like with this well, this is a child. They cannot handle curvature while eating. Less stabbing risk factors. Less stabbing is it risk though? factors, I believe. I think <sighs> well, because like there's a surprise. Like if it curves up, the kid thinks it's going straight in, but it's really going up. It's a it's a complicated <laughs> like, situation. Like, I wonder if they did a study on that and some like just like 67% of children rammed forks into their nose <laughs> because of the curve. <laughs> like, Well, but to solve your problem was they started on the TV show Veep, they started to kind of, uh, she was p- proposing that they start make all spoons out of cornstarch. So it was like cornstarch spoons. So it was like biodegradable. No. And it wouldn't no. be like, once you use it, you know, you could throw it out instead of plastic, you know? I feel like how much, how was, much energy is used to make that though? Oh, I don't know. Probably just... Probably, I don't think it's about how much energy as it was like the the waste the plastic. Yes, but you're waste. creating waste yeah. when you're with the energy. So just get a metal spoon, like metal spoons. I'm a huge fan of metal spoons. It's like we started Concur. out that way. It's like we always kind of come around to what we started out with. We're like, we'll make this better. We'll make this better. We'll make this better. And then we're like, oh, we're back to where we started. <laughs> right. Right. Well, anyway. to kind of hit on something a little bit heavier, uh, heavier than this McFlurries. Week, I mean, Good luck, dude. it's I don't. <laughs> it's pretty close. Okay, it's pretty yeah. close. You you try. Um, I I I want to kind of just bring up a pretty simple subject. Okay. Um, I keep seeing more and more homeless individuals, and I know we talked about this mm-hmm. in the previous podcast, but it'd be interesting to see what our audience thinks a little bit about this as well. Um, and I know that wherever you're at, you know, my environment, I probably see more homeless individuals just because they. In my job, they come to me all the time. And, um, but it's, I have never encountered more individuals than what I've been ca- encountering lately that are homeless. And it's not just, it doesn't affect me as much when it's adults, but when I see children accompanied with them, yeah. I'm just like, oh my God, this is heartbreaking. Like you're living out of your van or you're living in a tent and you have kids with you and you try to get child service involved and it's, it's not quick, it's not efficient. Right. Oftentimes they don't have cell phones. They don't have ways of communicating with them. So it's a heartbreaking situation. So it's just been kind of something I've been thinking about more and more. Um, And I did a little bit of research on what countries have the lowest levels of homelessness. And right now the lowest homeless level is in Finland. Finland is a country with the least homeless. And actually they don't even consider uh, homeless, like the definition for homeless doesn't mean that you don't have a house. Or that you're not in, a, or it doesn't mean that you're living on the street. I think the word means Sorry. that. Like, yeah, like you can be without owning a home and considered homeless in Finland. So basically, like nobody lives on the streets in Homeland, right? Or in Finland right I now. I gotcha. Um, so, um, but I was kind of watching this video and I had posted a video um, about this as well. And it's kind of interesting because it talks about there's two kind of main approaches to homelessness. One is, um, it's called a, it's basically it's called a continuum of care uh, f- uh, approach. Okay. And the first way is where you take an individual, you say, hey, you have these problems. Once you solve these problems, you'll be rewarded with these next kind of things to help you get established with a house. So like you have this um, uh, addiction problem. So once you have this addiction problem solved and you test negative for three months, then we'll give you a... I don't know, Uh, we'll give you either an apartment or we'll give you, um, uh, usually it's like some type of like, 
uh, set you up with like a part-time job or something else like that. Um, and the problem with the continuum of care is a lot of times when somebody is homeless, and this is what I've been encountering and, and witnessing, is when somebody's homeless, their top priority is to survive, basically. It's like, where am I going to sleep tonight? How am I going to get food tonight? How am I going to sustain myself and kind of not be, um, you know, dead <laughs> in the yeah. next couple years? Your, your outlook is much shorter term than like, exactly. how do I Just save for the like, future? What am I going to do in five years? Yeah. What am I going to do in 20 years? Yeah. Exactly, Jordan. Exactly. And that's kind of what we saw with like the North Koreans, right? Like their main goal wasn't to figure out like contemplate philosophy mm -hmm. or to like to critique their government it was to like survive it's to find crickets to eat it's to find you know um which was a way illegal. of surviving when which was illegal which well uh, if they're government owned yeah right because right. everything's government owned right um so it's 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 a survival situation but what finland's done and it's kind of interesting is they've implemented a housing first solution okay so they say we don't care what issues you have like okay you're a drug addict or you have um a felony or you have you know some type of background that you haven't deserved this type of situation or housing right mm -hmm. um they don't care what that is they automatically provide you with with a, a private not room, but kind of like studio. Like they have like, so it has like a kitchen, it has a bathroom, it has a bedroom. It's not like, like something that's decked out, right? Yeah, but it's a like a mansion or anything. It's a place to survive, right? So it eliminates that first primary need of shelter, right? That a lot of people have a hard time moving past mm -hmm. or moving um, past their other difficulties because they haven't sustained that. And then from there, then they offer these programs, then they offer these other things, but it's not a requirement. Like they don't have to have those things, those goals met. Mm -hmm. They don't have to have those things achieved to get that type of, uh, uh, residence. And so the issue then comes from that. It's like, okay, well, where's this money coming from to provide housing for all these individuals, right? Where's the, who's support, who's supporting that? You know, it has a very, like, maybe you would call a socialism approach, right? Um, and well, the, the, the issue is, is if you look at the, the, the problem as a whole, the amount of money that we're spending on outreach programs and certain types of homeless programs actually would be significantly higher, is significantly higher than the cost of providing potential housing to these individuals. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened in Finland. They found out once they implemented this, this actually, there was a study that took place in New York. Uh, where they did, they had a population of like a thousand people, and 500 of them they just gave them housing, and 500 they offered these programs, and they saw which ones were able to get jobs, kind of be a become productive members of society, and it was like it was like 80 percent within the housing mm -hmm. were able to reach that goal within a year, and the other group that just were offered programs, it was like 20 percent. It sounds like they took um, with that side of things, they took more of an education approach. So I don't think that I don't think our answer is to never offer help to people. Um, the most succinct way I heard it put by someone who's going to be probably running for governor in Oregon, because we have a huge, huge homeless, obviously, as you're, as you're sharing that, that's that's a real thing that's going on here. Yeah. And it used to be right. that Portland had about 40% of our homeless population, and now they have about 25%. And it's not because the homeless population has gone down. It's because it's grown so much outside of Portland. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so Portland's is not reduced significantly. It's just ours has gone way up even out in rural areas like in our area that, that we live outside of Salem um, and his approach was and he said that he was quoting a, a Democrat from like 30 years ago whose approach was is help those who want the help and make it uncomfortable for those who don't so that they will push them to get the comfort and with that I would say there's there was an agency that was posting up and they're actually going around putting signs up ar around the Salem Oregon area saying please don't give money to the people that are ahead of you like basically doing it proactively before them they said if you want to give money please give it to our agency and refer them to us because they don't have enough people coming to get the help that they even have the funding to help people with things like what you're saying because the people are not they're more incentivized to sit and take the handouts because they're getting more from that 
and able to continue in either whatever it is, a life of addiction or just doing what they mm. want. And so they're mm. actually not getting enough people into their programs for the help that they know that they need. And so they're saying, can you help drive people to the programs to get them out of this this cycle of whatever it is mm. that they're stuck in? And if you want to give money, don't help perpetuate where they're at. Help us by not only driving them to us, but also helping to fund these programs that we have. And here's the ones that we have to teach them what the skills that they need to get a job, the skills that they need to, to have a place to eat or have a place to stay and eat and whatever. And they provide help to provide those things and educate them much. It sounded much like, I think uh, that's, I think that's awesome. Yeah. It sounded much like the, I think that's really good. the reintegration or not reintegration. Cause there, there was no integration, but when the girl explained coming out of North Korea, how they were, they were taught, how to like survive in society that's what this place sounded like and it's specifically in oregon mm -hmm. specifically to our area saying we don't even have the people that we have funding to even help coming to us because they're not being they're not being directed to us they're staying where they're at for some reason they're not saying why and i agree just... with i i do agree with like if somebody <clears throat> doesn't want help i don't think that we can there's nothing force there's almost to, nothing you to can get do. help right yeah but i think that for the a large portion of individuals, I think if you actually provided them with housing without making a requirement of meeting certain goals at first, I think that would then facilitate and help them eliminate a huge concern they have and then be able to have that higher level of functioning once it they know might, that I'm going I've to be just, able to go I've home to people and I'm, going, have, I'm not going to be cold tonight. Yeah, I've talked to people who work in those places and because they have schedules and stuff like that, that they have like... There's certain times when they can open them up and all like, like they're staffing, like they're, mm -hmm. those people work like a job, yep. you know? So people are like, yeah. well, I don't like that. So they won't go and even seek the stuff that's available. Cause they're like, well, I have to do this. I have, there's, they're not requirements in the sense that you need to have a job or do these certain things. It's just like, well, and even like there's a schedule homeless shelters, like even homeless shelters, it's not like, it's not a place where people want to go. Right. It's not a place where they like, like they say, hey, if you go to this homeless shelter, we might help facilitate a program for you. And then kind of this step to this step to this step, right. especially if you have kids, especially if you have children with you. It it's really not hard. a safe. It's not a safe place. It's not a happy place. It's not a place that you feel like I can succeed in life and or I have an opportunity to to grow. Yeah. Um, and I think that if you have a basic and. No, uh, this is just my opinion, right? This is just from what I've encountered in my little kind of experiences. If you had somebody with basic housing set and taken care of, I think that would facilitate a lot more options, like like a job, right? And this is this is another kind of like issue that I have with um, homelessness is when I see a lot of individuals that are homeless and they have a, a past record, like they have maybe a past felony, mm -hmm. and it doesn't even have to be a violent crime. Like it literally, I've seen a lot of people with violent or with, with felonies and they don't have a violent crime record. Like they literally just have like one guy was, um, he had like, uh, embezzlement or another one was like, that's kind like of, a, there's things that it's aren't kind of hard to get a yeah, business job. I after mean, that. No, but, but like the example being like, he didn't like try to murder somebody. Right? right. And even in that situation, that could have been, you could be convicted of convicted of, you know, when you were 18 years old, you decided to drink and drive, you know, and then you have a felony for the rest of your life and you can't get a job and then you just spiral downhill. I think there needs to be major reform with jobs and, well, and so employment there, there are programs, and rehabilitation afterwards. They're not necessarily easy and I, I don't necessarily think I disagree with them not being easy because um, I had a friend that I worked with and they had an issue too with past things on their record. So there were certain jobs that were like restrictive to them getting but after a certain amount of time where I work, there was a program that if you had proven yourself over a certain amount of time and then you had an, a higher up person help you with a letter of recommendation, they could go down and have that removed so that if somebody did a background check, that felony would no longer show up for a job. Ooh, and I didn't even know that's that. a great idea. I didn't even know that existed to try to like and it did it, it worked, but it took time. It took a lot of effort on their part to do it. And they followed the process and were able to get it removed. And then after that, we're able to move on up into other positions that that would have shown up on 
had they gone through that stuff. So there, there are programs that are there. I think it's just a matter of education. I was going to say like the reason why it makes sense that like that company's like, Hey, can you please push them to us is they're able to do a lot of things that you and I can't like, I can, I can throw money at something. Um, even if I think it's a waste, you know, like it's still a human Mm -hmm. being. Right. So, but you never know, like, is this person just out here? Do they actually have stuff? They're just taking a spot from somebody that actually doesn't have a home, but they're just like, they know they can make money standing on the street corner. And there's people that do that. It's not, it doesn't mean that they're a high percentage or all of them, or even maybe it's just a few of them, but those places can sift through those people and see who needs the help. I think when we really started to struggle in Oregon though, and I know this is when we shut down um, our state run like mental facilities and a lot of the people just mm, went out onto the street yeah. and then you intermix those people. So then you don't even know someone may be out there just because mm. they want to be there. And someone may, someone may be out there because they have a felony. Someone might be out there because they got into drugs and now it's this cycle of um, that's what they're seeking. Um, so there's all these different well, things that, that are those organizations. They need to be pushed to those organizations to get the help that they need because it's all going to be unique, especially here where we – shut down those places and there's all these people that have a, a varying degree of some of them need to probably be reinstitutionalized because they're not even safe to themselves out in society. Um, I think for sure there's a mental health aspect to homelessness. Undeniable. I'm, I'm undeniable. saying specifically to Salem though, because we had that. Yeah. Happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, but I think I it's can't, not limited I can't, to Salem. I can't speak to other places, mental, but that did, but that was a federal thing. That was actually a federal okay. thing that happened. Like it was across the nation. But that, that was happened. a state run Oregon, Oregon State Hospital. I know because I know people that worked there. That's specifically what happened. Well, here. it's still going. That was it, it's that hospital still functioning. But a ton actually. of it shut down, and that was the that was one of the things that led to, um, it was like what 10, 15 years ago, like it getting really, really bad. And mm-hmm. and so that's why I'm only saying specifically to say the mark. I can't speak to anywhere else besides that. Well, um, the this is this is what I think though, as far as a potential avenue for changing our outlook on homelessness Mm -hmm. as far as jobs go as well. Um, Because I was thinking about this, um, you know how I've, I've spoken to my concern of manufacturing moving out of the United States and it's been continually becoming a, it's almost uh, not, we're more and more, it's almost non-existent, right? We were becoming more and more dependent on other nations to create our goods and because of that, because of the the capitalistic approach, right, the lower cost of business outside of the United States, it's 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 uh, enticing for businesses to do so. Right. Now, I am all for a company getting to make their own decisions, but I'm also for a government protecting its people. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I think we have gotten to a point where our policies with businesses out and business deals being made outside of the United States has come at, at a cost to the, to it, to its people. Um, and I think a lot of that ties into our manufacturing when in the sixties, the fifties, people could have a manufacturing job and it could be, they could be a good middle-class job. Mm. They could be, and it didn't even have to be manufacturing. Actually, it was even like, like service. You could be work at a, uh, um, you know, a what do you call car detailing shop or you could work in like uh any type of like even fast food chain you know there's a potential to have a good middle income based wage things costed more potentially like comparatively you know um but you can make a living unfortunately as we've moved all of our products out of the united states we have lost a lot of the jobs i think as well that have been able to (laughs) facilitate that higher earning income and or prevent people from struggling to buy a home, right? Prevent people from struggling to, to have a decent income that either is even could pay rent really. Like a lot of these jobs, if we see are, I don't know, even if they're low income jobs, it's pretty tough to pay a $1,300 mortgage for a one bedroom, one bath. If you're making I don't know what even minimum wage is right now, but I think I think there there could be reform with with requirements to be done in the United States, and that could facilitate um, uh, maybe better paying jobs and or 
uh, facilitate maybe lower real estate costs. I think where we went wrong, and I actually was like this, I wasn't, this is not even in my notes at all. Like, it's just interesting that you brought it mm-hmm. up. And I've been thinking about this as like, I remember like my dad has told me when he was in college, which is a while ago. Sorry, dad. You, I'm, I'm getting old too. Um, but he's able to pay for college room and board and everything working a summer job. Imagine what that would take to say you could do that today. Couldn't. You couldn't. You couldn't. And and so there's a website, and I you can rhyme, remind me. I don't remember bringing this up on the podcast before. We brought up the FED thing with the money and how much debt and all that, like the national debt mm. counter. This is akin to the same thing. And this this link, I'll put it in our show notes, and I'll show it right now. Is and you'll find this fascinating. And then, but if I've already talked about this here, then just tell me to shut up. Is it's called hmm. WTF happened in 1971, and this is when money shifted and changed in the United States. And so you have the productivity has gone up 246 percent, and the compensation has only gone up 115 percent. This is not just low paying jobs; this is all paying jobs, which is why the lower paying jobs suffer the most. But there's still less that you can afford. And as you scroll through, you can see like you can see the different indicators that change. And it all this is all when we changed basically money was the business of the United States. To, so, so to say that we don't have exports today, and we talked about this when we were talking about um the debt and everything, the number one export for the United States is the US dollar. And that's why we're mad at places like, for instance, tomorrow, and we can talk about this before we leave. Um they're launching cryptocurrency as a backing currency for El Salvador. Um, and they're having ATMs and stuff. But if you look at like 1971 cost of living, a new house is $25,200 and the average income was $10,622. Do you now make half wow. what your house is worth in a year? I don't. Right. Right. Um, right. And a new car was $3,560. So, that means that you wait 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 wait. So that new car was okay, 30% of your annual yes. income. Yes. So it, is that the case if you went and bought a new mm. car? Think think about a new car right now. It's probably right. not the case anymore. Average rent was $150 a month. So what is a person making there? That's that's about 10% of their income, right? Or less. Or yeah. yeah. Um tuition to Harvard University. Harvard people, Harvard. $2600 per year. So what went movie right? tickets didn't go up. Movie tickets haven't gone up compared. Well, you're t- comparing to it to, to here. <laughs> but if you go to New York, it's like 20 some odd dollars to go to go to a movie. Mm. And gasoline was 40 yeah. cents a gallon and the U.S. postage stamp was eight cents. So so I guess I guess what I'm saying is I don't necessarily buy that our minimum wage is the problem. And I don't know that it would be a. Pr- I don't know that it would solve anything either because we've come yeah. so far in the gap, it, and that's where when people say, "But if I just raise the minimum wage, the cost of things just go up," and that's the case. People are like, "Well, yeah, but then what do you do?" Well, like maybe what you do is you, is you decouple, our government from controlling the value, that we earn. Not I'm not saying or I'm not saying that we ch- that we change the the government regulating people being paid i said specifically value because if i make a dollar today and put into a savings account and i wait 10 years and pull it out it's no longer worth as much as it was when i put it in and that should be wrong because they're the ones that control that value or is there a cost is there some type of cost control that takes place well and outside of this is what a lot of people in decentral finance are trying to solve and i'm not bringing that up to sit to be a nerd or whatever i know people hear me that know me hear me talk about this all the time but the reason that was created was because it we used to have a dollar that was backed by gold and gold went up right and so if it goes up in value that means you have a you have a deflationary money but now that it's not backed by anything and it's just our main export mm-hmm. we can just print we mm-hmm. printed six trillion dollars more this year that means for every single right. person in the united states we added seventy thousand dollars of debt to their head yeah so yeah i don't think the problem as far as like when it comes to income and homelessness and all that has much to do with minimum wage or a a a uh what do they call it uh a livable uh what a livable wage or I don't remember what they call it. Well, I, I think that it does have it. I, I think it's one or the other. 
I think you actually showed a perfect example of it. It's either inflation. I mean, it's inflation of the cost of goods in, mm-hmm. and that that map clearly showed that. But the problem right? is, is if you drive that, that lower showed, up and you keep making money worth less, you're just gonna keep you keep chasing it. Well, no, no, you can't do that. That's the thing. Yeah, you have to change one. You can't change right. both. Right. So I think the cost of goods then have to have a, a peg reassessment. But yeah. The problem is, I mean, and that is that that's, that's what comes to our main export and us telling people to use the U.S. dollar and sell our debt, and we we spend more money than we make. We are basically a failing household. If you were to do that in your own home year after year after year, you would eventually be worth nothing. Right. Like if you and I had chose mm. tomorrow to spend $40,000 a year, but only make $20,000 a year and then sell our debt to our neighbors, eventually that implodes. Well, I think you'd be select about what those items are that you control the cost of. Right. And I think that would then reflect potential but then if you're the, earning opportunities. I guess that's what I'm saying. Like it becomes this, it, well, but like, it becomes like circular example, because perfect. our U.S. dollar is what's used as that people store the value for, but then we keep making more of it, which makes it worth less money. And now we're getting mad at these countries for saying we're going to go to something else. Well, I think the perfect <clears> example, <throat> though, like you brought up with colleges, I think you living you wage. regulate <laughs> Someone just living wage. There it is. Awesome. <laughs> great job. Thank you. Who was that? Oh, that was great. Oh, good job, Green. Um, I think if you regulate the, if you look at colleges, right, I think you regulate what options there are in colleges. We see that there's all of these options for accessory things outside of just the education, right? We have all these ex- exorbitant, you know, gyms and exorbitant student yeah, they you know, res- recreation resorts. areas. And it's like, especially when it's a state run and or, I don't know, federally granted facility, like, Let's make this just a legit affordable well, place to go to school and get an that, education. That wasn't what actually – when those started – yes, that is the problem. That's why they, they cost so much money is because there are all these amenities that they're like, this comes along with it. And we're like, yeah, but you, what if I, what if you could pay $5,000 a year and still get the same education and not have all these amenities? I think most people would pick that. Um, maybe. I wouldn't imagine spending $45,000 more per year for just basic to get that. Um, I'd be like, oh, I can go get that somewhere else. I'll just get a gym membership. Mm. Um, but mm. when it got really, really bad and prices went up is when the government got involved and said, we're going to do these loans and they're going to be guaranteed and nobody can get out of them. So you're going to get your money. And then the school prices went up. It almost perfectly correlates with that. Right. Time. Totally. And, and totally. so, yeah, I think the, t- the, the, the thing that we're finding that is the That's common, criminal. that is That's the common madness. thread is when corporations work with governments together we all get screwed and we've talked about this before it's corporatism it's corporate yeah. corporations running yeah. the government for more profit and because of that they can give them more money to get the people in there that they want and they just this is this cycle we've come you know wtf happened in 1971.com go check it out guys it's it's interesting to look at 71 it's terrifying because it's a, it's it's a wild illustration of how inflation is booming beyond the benefit of the American people right. substantially. Can, and it's, it's unrelenting right now. Right. Yeah. Which is why yeah, tomorrow crazy. El Salvador officially goes live accepting Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency, Bitcoin specifically as a currency in their country. And there is no capital gains tax on any gains of those in the country. So if Bitcoin goes up tomorrow by a billion percent, they don't tax you on that. It is an actual store of value and a savings. Yeah. Account. We'll see how long that, that we'll capital see. gains factor lasts. Yeah. That'll be I interesting. Mean, I, think eventually I think that what they're trying to do though, it's just like other, it's what corporations are doing as well is, and that's what it was designed for originally wasn't to be spent as money. So that's where I'm kind of like, eh, I don't like that aspect of it. Cause it's not meant to be spent like a credit card. It's it's supposed to be a hedge against inflation because there is a finite supply. And if you put your money in 10 years from now, it's worth more than when you put it in. Um, that's actually a, a reasonable approach. Yeah, it's a hedge against inflation. Yeah, right. that's reasonable. And it's, it's a, it's, it is, well, that which is literally a store of value. So not a, f- a store of cost. Because if I put $10 in my, my savings account and I pull it out 10 years later, it's still 10 
dollars, right? But the value of that ten dollars is now less than it was when it went in. And so when I say store of value, it's it's different than a store of numbers, you know. So anyway. Well, something that's actually pretty cool, um, since we're on the subject of manufacturing mm -hmm. um, and imports, exports, all that sort of fun stuff, is we've talked about China and their use of Uyghur concentration camps to organ selling, manufacture goods to or well to sell organs, yeah, sure, but to also manufacture goods. Um, and a lot of countries have started to implement and crack down on the use of importing goods from China, f specifically from these regions. And um, lately, the U.S. has really been ramping up their investigations of this. Um, and a good example that just happened, there was millions of dollars worth of goods that were just caught in Atlanta. And um, the the border protection inspectors saw that the and shirts items and said blouses. that they were from... Yeah, it said that the items were actually from Vietnam. They were listed as Vietnam, but then after a little bit more investigation, they were able, they were actually able to trace it back to the Xinjiang region. Xinjiang region, sorry, and that's where over a million Uyghurs are in being held right now in concentration camps. Over a million, which is nuts. It's crazy. Um, it's crazy, dude. It's crazy. Um, so a lot of countries are also implementing bans of doing, and Australia just did this actually, of doing any business with any regions, specifically in China, that have been associated with that slave labor also. Mm. Which is like, man, you got to do something. We have to do something because this is just getting out of control. Right. It's, it's, it's insane. It's madness. It's, it's terrifying. It's sad. But, I mean, until we make it financially not advantageous for them to do that, it won't stop. I think we just need to like come out and say it. Like, China is not for us. They are not for anybody but themselves. And if we continue to send them money, then we're funding the enemy. Well, and it's not only that they're... That's, that's the thing. Like, the Chinese government is not for anybody other than the Chinese government. Yeah, I, like, I wouldn't, a, they're not even for their own people. Yeah, I, when I say that, thing. I don't mean... Yeah, they're not for their own people. And I, 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 I want for nothing else than for the Chinese people to be freed from the slavery of that, of the CCP. Really? Yeah. There's no freedom for those people there. <laughs> even if they aren't necessarily in slavery right now, they, they don't have a lot of basic human civil rights and freedoms of information. Right. They don't have freedom of information, right? Their internet is highly. Well, did constricted. you see, I don't know if I, did I send you the article about the kid? Yeah, I did send it to you. The kids. Yeah. Kids. So it used to be parents would be like, Oh, this is a great idea. But imagine if the government was telling you what your kids could and couldn't do. That's kind of strange. Um, as they were limiting kids to like, what was it? Was it an hour a day during the week and then three hours a day on the weekend for online video games. And now that the, I thought they actually banned it during the weekday. Now they did. So they changed it. And now it's, an hour on Friday night from like eight to 9 PM. And then on Saturday and Sunday, it's a total of three hours total that they can, they can be on crazy. It's like, and some parents crazy, might be crazy. like, Oh, that's great. That's I wish it was for my kids. I'm like, yes, but it should never be the government coming in and telling you or limiting and telling the companies that how the kids can play. Like, I agree with you. I don't think kids should be playing all night and all day and it shouldn't be affecting their schoolwork and all that. But I would also say that's the fault of the parents if they're not parenting their kids. Well, then also like, okay, well, the ramifications, how are the government going to enforce that? What are they going to do to the parents? Well, the kids are already find either using VPNs or they're using adult accounts or falsifying them. And it's very easy to do. You're that's just true. making the kids smarter. Like, and <laughs> it's like, you, well, it's like anything. If you tell a kid that they can't have it or you tell someone they can't have it, what's their, when you try to control them when you're not doing it by education, we're seeing it now with like the whole like, whether or not people are like terrified that they're getting chipped by vaccines or like whatever, there, there's this huge divide and certain people are like, I'm just not going to get it solely because I'm being told I have to. And I mean, you're free to have that, have that viewpoint. That's fine. It's just, I feel like if you sit down with any adult, any child or whatever, and just explain to them or have an education, like as your kids get older, you can't just keep saying like, 
no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. Like if I did that with my 16 year old all the time, it would be a problem. Like mm. I, I have to tell him like, no, okay. So this is why we don't do this. This is why it's not wise. This is why we're, I've had that conversation. Like this is you, you like, there's other factors at play here that you have to understand. And that's why we don't do this. Like, and you can choose to do that, but it's going to have some consequences that come along with it. And here's why, like, and mm -hmm. You know, and you, yeah. so you don't make rules. It's, it's a, you don't make rules for the for the lowest rung. You know what I mean? It's like, um, you know, it, everyone people can drive cars. It's like we don't stop driving cars because there are some people that have DUIs. You know, we don't stop selling alcohol because certain people have DUIs. It's like that. Well, certain certain states do. Certain yeah, counties still do, they, which is crazy. But people still drink. Yeah, but it doesn't work. That's the thing. Like, well, you know what it does? It just it's a, it gives the government more control to have more options to control the population. That's it. The more control they have, the better. All, the, all Josh in all. Gray. Simple as that. Says, I played a lot of video games and it affected my schoolwork directly. Good thing you don't need much of an education in today's world to succeed. That's a that's a bright oh, outlook. Gosh. Yeah. <sighs> oh man. It's, it's sad. Sad. China sad. Um I that's most of the main things I wanted yeah, to do. Stuff on. it was um, the stuff we talked about last week. Um People, I'm sure pe most people have. Oh, one thing I did want to bring up. I did find this disturbing, and I still need to go find the link where it's at. And I don't know what's going on, hmm. but you all can look at it. I'll send you the link, and you can go look at it too. It's the National Archives, which is our our government. That's where they store like documents. You can go look at different different. Um, you can look historically at our Constitution, the Bill of Rights, all that kind of stuff. National Archives online. They have recently started putting at the top of the page, which I have seen for the u.s constitution a harmful language alert on the top of the page and i do not understand i have no answers i think it's messed up and strange but it specifically states at the top of the page harmful language alert see nara's statement on potentially harmful language and it goes on to talk about like could be offensive racist hateful i'm like really the only thing on the page is the u.s constitution which outlies our freedoms as people and they're labeling mm. it that way. I find that disturbing. That's interesting. So you're saying that was on Twitter? No, no, no. It is on the National Archives government webpage where you can go look at the U.S. Constitution at the very top of the page. Wait, your link? Uh, it's, yeah, it, they might have pulled it down now, but this is the archive of what they had it as. Huh, strange. Did you click on it? Yeah, I'd have to see that. I, yeah, oh, I, I can bring it up on here. Yeah. So this is what it, it shows it as. At the very oh, top yeah. okay, at the very go. top of the page, it says so here's the US Constitution, right? All the pages. Da, 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 da. It's the US archives, Constitution of the United States, harmful language, see NARA's statement on potential. And if you go here, it will tell you exactly what it means. Harmful or difficult content may be found in the National Archives catalog. Why does the National Archives potentially harmful content available? But it's specifically on the page for the U.S. Constitution, which is to me, hmm. I'm like, is that on every page? I don't think so. No. I wonder. Hmm. Crazy. Yeah, that's that's peculiar. Strange. Honestly, honestly, I I feel like I feel like I've been duped so many times by so many things on like. Oh no, I, that's why I still question it. That's that why I like, said like I've looked man, at this very little. I need to see things. Except it's from a yeah. page of a guy that I followed that I I he would he wouldn't do that so or he hasn't unless he got duped unless he got duped but it's his article so and he's has all the links to it wouldn't be great for him oh man crazy times all right i have three tils good sir i have two go first perfect i will go first today i learned the united states postal service once used a missile to launch mail they it was a test run to see how they, how well they could uh, use uh, new, like uh, what's it called? Um, what do they call it? I am uh, some type of like basically guided missiles. Um, they did a f test flight from a submarine off the coast in Florida, a hundred miles away North and it landed in the expected area. They had landing some type of like landing gear for the missile as well. And it was like over 500 pieces of mail. And then it was shipped off and distributed from there. But it was like they they were testing using missiles to launch mail. 
I if would say necessary. that's a really good way if we wanted to send air mail to China at this point. Or North Korea. Or North Korea. Right? Pretty much yeah. that entire area. Uh, today right, I learned me. that uh, McDonald, the McDonald's Corporation quietly phased out Ronald McDonald, the company's clown mascot, due to the 2016 clown scare video fad. No way. I didn't know Ronald McDonald wasn't associated with McDonald's anymore. I haven't seen him on anything Very in a quiet. long time. Very Poor quiet. Ronald. Wow. Holy cow. Poor Ronald. And Grimace. Did you know Grimace had more than two arms in the beginning? He was like no. this purple monster with six arms. Fascinating. Yeah. Huh. Today I learned it can take a hundred years for an embalmed body buried in a coffin to completely decompose. Typically, the only thing left over are just the teeth. Even the bones are gone? I guess so. Yeah, if it's enough moisture. Just like dinosaur bones. Like, they're actually not the bones. It's sure. just the surrounding structures. Hmm. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan. Makes you think. Let's not do embalming. <laughs> That's why we, well, right. we yeah. burn people. Uh, yeah. Today I learned that the details of the Manhattan Project were so secret that many workers had no idea why they did their jobs. A laundry woman had a dedicated duty to hold up, and this is in quotes, this is the description of the job that they were given, hold up an instrument and listen for a clicking sound without knowing why. It was a Geiger counter testing the radiation levels of uniforms. (gasps) Oh, no. Oh my god, that's horrible. Oh, poor lady. Poor lady. Well, she's probably she dead was now. barren like, from that point on, probably. And died 40 oh years god. early. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, last TIL. Today I learned that Vermont ambulances actually stock maple syrup for oral glucose administration. Of course. Likely when someone's hypo- hypoglycemic. But they actually carry. Maple syrup mixture. Like, do you have any like, glucose dang. pills? No. No. Like, I got. I, I, like, I, I got some. Someone, syrup. someone over here needs needs glucose now. They're like, well, I've got these glucose pills. No, we can't use that. No, we no, must no. use no, no. the Vermont no, no, no. maple syrup. Let them die. <laughs> <laughs> let them die. Let them die. We only got the maple syrup. Let them. Let them go. The guy's like dying. He's like, no, no. Let me go. Maple Don't syrup. do it. That's all I need. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's like Buddy the L. Oh shoot. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> and syrup. All right. Uh, hit me with your last, or you want to start shower? I'll I got start four. shower thoughts. How many showers you got? Um, right. I think I had five, but I believe you doubled one of mine, so I have four too, but I'll go first. Uh, car manufacturers oh, okay. technically manufacture more doors than cars. <laughs> True. Fascinating. It should be door yeah. manufacturers. Also more, yeah, 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 yeah. Especially if they have a trunk. Yeah, fascinating. Hmm, I like that. And there's roughly um, there's roughly twice as many nipples as people in the world. That is very true. <laughs> Eyeballs as well. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Ears also. Um, okay. It's this is kind of interesting. Chicken is the only breakfast food that hasn't been born yet that we typically eat, as far as meat goes. Yeah. Or protein. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Like, it's weird to eat just like you well, know, no, it's grilled chicken. It's technically, it's only a breakfast, at breakfast food time if it hasn't been born yet. No, because you'll eat eggs like in like rice. No, no, no. Like chicken fried rice. I'm saying, and... I'm saying, chicken itself is only uh. a breakfast food if it hasn't been born yet. Well, or it's no, no, no. It doesn't have to be only a breakfast food, though. No, I'm I, no, but that's the only time it is, is what I'm saying. Like it only is a breakfast food when it hasn't been born yet. Like you don't have a a slab of chicken for breakfast, right? It's not a breakfast right. food, so it's only state. It, I'm not saying eggs can't be not a breakfast food. I'm just saying chicken only is a chicken breakfast is food only a breakfast food if, if it hasn't, it hasn't been, been born, born yet. yet. Yes. Yes. Okay. Exactly. That's it. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Yes. Yeah. 
You're like arguing with me. That is not true. Eggs can be on listen, burgers. Listen, can, I don't think you get what I'm saying. I don't think here. you get it. They can be raw in a protein it's shake. It's complicated. It's complicated. I can I throw them in houses. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All Ooh. right, hit me. A lot of Google's revenue comes from people too lazy to type dot com. Very true. I don't true. I don't know in my Hilarious. job how many times, and if anyone's ever listens to this. I'm not mad at you for doing this, if I've told you this before at my profession. But I have to explain, please go to this website and make sure that you put it into the address bar and not the search box in the middle. Because otherwise you get ads and our stuff blocks it. And they're like, "Uh, okay, so here's all the options I have. It's like, so specifically we need to go to the address bar and type what I typed, what I told you to type. Oh, that'd be mad. Not... The search box. Yeah, I did that. Like, oh no, God. you did not. Because you... Stop it. You're just bugging me even telling me that. I quit telling you that. That's it's, bugging it's me. A... Just even that. It's a big circle. I can't handle it. Okay. Um, there's... And I'm not speaking from personal experience, but maybe I am. Yeah, I don't know. There's nothing worse. Maybe. There's nothing worse than dancing naked in your living room, drunk, and realizing that you left your blinds open and your neighbors are sitting outside on their porch and could definitely see you. There's nothing worse. Okay. <laughs> I I could name something worse. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. You yeah, find yeah. out it's not your living. You find out it's not your living room. <laughs> you need to back up. That's back up from hilarious. your mic a little bit because it's hot. Oh, sorry. You're, used, so, you're so used to doing it the way you're used to. Yeah. Well, I can't hear my own mic. That's so true. That's throwing yeah. me off. It was getting fuzzy. It like was slowly getting fuzzier as you started oh, okay. to kiss it more and more. I gotcha. All oh. right. Hit me. Since the speed of light is finite and we need light to hit an object and then come to our eyes in order for us to see it, we can never truly look at the present. It, very true. Very true. I love that. It's crazy, but it's, Yeah. And we're not even, yeah, we're always looking at the past. Yeah. Well, this whole Einstein's whole relativity theater, the theory, that's what started. He was like, what if I had perfect vision and I went to a distant planet and I looked back and it was a thousand light years away. Right. Like I would be looking a thousand years into the past. Yep. It's so it's cool. a wild thought. It's crazy. Um, Both are insects but when you crush a cockroach you're a hero but if you crush a butterfly you're evil it depends where that butterfly's at also i would like to say it's interesting to me how some people loathe moths but they love butterflies they're like the same kind of the same thing kind of the same thing except i don't think moths are like all migratory Oh, I have no idea. I, know, I think some of them are, no idea. but I don't think they all are. And do moths do the whole Couldn't chrysalis thing? I think so. Here's the thing. Mothballs sounds normal. Butterfly balls does not. <laughs> Butterballs. <laughs> They're <laughs> butterballs. <laughs> that wasn't in my notes. That's hilarious. But it, I love it. Yeah, okay. Ice cubes are technically water supplements. <laughs> true i love that that's true (laughs) all right my last shower thought for you all throughout history the leading cause of a broken nose was likely a big mouth it's true that's all that's That's all that's someone that's That's very very clumsy moths you get more blindly into you butterflies do not i have had butterflies like flutter into my face and i don't like it just as much as moths. Oh yeah, that was the last. It's comment. interesting. Butterflies. Butterflies usually just land on my shoulders, like when I'm walking around for some really? reason. Like usually when I'm. They out, land on my shoulders. They land on my and... nose, and then someone starts singing, yeah. and they're like, "I hear music." I hear music frequently. Very true. Very true. Yeah. All right, guys. That's that's it for testing normal this week. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We're so grateful to have these conversations with you guys. I feel like guys. that was a weird roller coaster in the beginning. I liked it. It was I it was a I liked it was it. a ride that I was like I didn't expect to get on this at the park, but I liked it in the end. But I like it. But I like it. I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, it was fun. 
All right, guys, you stay classy. San Diego. And we'll uh, like, we're, subscribe, you stay classy, share San Diego. Us, come back and like, talk to us next share. week. Subscribe, share. Let us know what you like. Let us know what you don't like. And um, my mic, I'm going to be getting something to help me kind of hear how I sound so it won't be too loud in your speakers coming up soon, guys. It didn't get loud. It just got fuzzy. And That's all. Yeah, we're working on the sound. The camera quality is a lot better now, which is exciting. It is. And we appreciate you guys so much. Yeah. So we'll talk to you soon. See you guys. Peace out.